experienced issues with ballot papers earlier. Let's cross now to Lindsay Dentlinger to get the latest from there. Lindsay, can you give us an update on what the latest is with the ballot papers, the, the, the lack of ballot papers delivered there, stations um, opening late? Um, we understand that closing, that the counting has begun, voting is officially closed. Uh, what's the position there? So we've just had a briefing a short while ago giving all the 34 political parties here in the Western Cape an opportunity to raise concerns that uh, they've experienced through their observations today. Chief amongst those uh, political parties raising concerns about indelible ink that might not be so indelible after all and the ease with which some people have reported being able to remove that from their thumbs. More concerning though um, some party agents saying that they have witnessed people attempting to vote more than once and being able to bypass uh, scanners um, and, and to attempt to uh, vote uh, multiple times. With me I have Cope's Deirdre Carter who once uh, she was uh, she had voted and was alerted to the fact that people might be trying to vote more than once. She tried to test the system uh, herself. Deirdre, thank you for joining us. Could you just explain to our viewers how you managed uh, to bypass the system as it were at several voting stations today using your own ID. Yeah. Well, first I just want to say good evening to all, um, to, to your viewers. Um, yeah, what happened, I was informed that there was a problem at one of the voting stations where they noted that people went from Milneton Primary to Milneton High, high-fived one another for voting again and then went to Tableview. Now, at first I said, no, it's impossible because the zip zip scanners, you won't get past it. If you've already voted, you will not be able to vote again. So. Um, five, six hours after voting, I went to the kitchen, grabbed the Domestos, because I didn't have chick, and put the Domestos on and it was gone. So I thought, well, you know what, let me go to where I actually voted. Went to the voting station where I voted, went to the presiding officer, said to him, do you mind, can you please scan my ID, I want to see if it's going to come through. Scanned it, no problem, it's there. Um, but in the event, if I try to commit fraud at the, exactly the same voting station, there is the, the second step where you have to check the, your, the, the voter's roll. So in the event, I would not have been able to vote a second time if I wanted to act fraudulently. Um, I then went to, to the second stop. Um, went through the first process, went through the zip zip scanner, firstly you know the thumb, the zip zip scanner um, and you will, you can actually see it gives you the VD number where I actually went and the time and um, went through the process where I could actually, it didn't pick up that I've already voted and when it comes to the process of having to now complete the VEC4 form um, I said, no, please call the presiding officer for me. Then I actually took the presiding officer's one side because I didn't want other people to hear it because this could start, you know, you could make the problem a lot bigger. So what we've done is, and the second one said to me, yes, the, the zip zip doesn't pick it up and people can actually go to other voting stations and go and vote more than once. That came from a presiding officer. I then went to the third station, the fourth station, the fifth station, and um, I've just got to make it very clear, I have not voted. I've yes. tested it, gone through the zip zip scanners, um, gone past the, you know, the ID and all of that, but as soon as I got to the point where I could actually complete the VEC form and get a ballot paper, that's when I said, please call the presiding officers in. Deirdre, what response did you get from presiding officers when you pointed out that you were able to obtain those slips? Um, first one where I voted was very shocked. The second one said, yes, it is possible um, because the system is not linked. Um, then the other three that I went to was also extremely shocked. How material do you think this problem is going to be to the election outcome? Well, you know what, I'm, I'm really concerned about it because if I could go to five in an hour, if you were out to do things like the two gentlemen that we saw, you know, we've got a case has been opened, we've reported it, um, we've got vehicle registration number, all of that. But if they have been hopping from, from station to station, how many other people did it that we don't know about? And it is not that a party agent will know that the guy has voted because he's going to a new voting station. Um, and I think, you know, what, what really concerns me is the IC's response that we had, that we must bring um, the evidence of the people that did it. It is not for us to bring the evidence. What needs to be done is they'll have to um, reconcile the VEC4 forms. 
then try and pick up who has voted more than once. And then, you know, we'll have to see what was the magnitude of it and take it from there. But just to absolutely say that, um, that we must now um, come and bring the proof of the, the people that did it is absolutely, that's not right. So there you have it. That is one of the uh, concerns being raised uh, here in the Western Cape this evening. Uh, other concerns raised by the parties who were given a platform uh, th this evening saying that they fear that the inclement weather might um, affect the turnout um, this evening. It has been a bit rainy, a bit cold today. Um, people maybe not being so eager to stand in queues. And then the other ish big issue, as you've pointed out, the issue of not enough ballots at the various uh, voting stations. The IEC's response response to that is that they have a 25% surplus, but that so many people turned up at stations where they were not registered, those ballots had to be transported to those stations, and they cannot be transported um, without being escorted by the police, and they, therefore the delay in getting um, those ballots to those stations. Uh, parties here saying that that could also affect voter turnout, people giving up, not wanting to stand in the queues too long, and maybe not returning uh, at a later stage today. All right, Lindsay, the parties haven't been given an opportunity to raise their concerns. Did the IEC address those concerns in that press briefing or were there certain unanswered questions? Well, certainly the issue about uh, of their surrounding the ink has not um, been sufficiently answered. Uh, the IEC's Courtney Sampson here only saying that it is concerning, but he is confident that it's not a universal problem. He says uh, he, it is a problem and it shouldn't be discounted, but he was very much of the opinion that um, it's, it, there are isolated incidences, but certainly ones that the IEC uh, should look into. And as I said, with regards to the ballot papers, him saying it's certainly not a case that not enough were printed. It was just a matter of getting those ballots to the stations where more people turned up than, uh, is, um, than are registered by the IEC for that particular voting station. The question raised in your interview a little bit earlier about the uh, ability of people to fraudulently vote multiple times, was that one of the issues specifically addressed by the IEC in their presser? Um, not directly, but uh, as Deirdre has pointed out here, those uh, parties are now having to raise and uh, provide proof to the IEC. And I, I expect um, over the coming hours, um, as, as counting begins, the IEC will begin to look into um, all those incidences reported by the parties. And hopefully in the coming hours, we'll have better answers as to um, uh, the, the validity of those uh, concerns. Right, thank you very much. That was Lindsay Dentliger coming to us from the National Operation or the Operation Center in the Western Cape rather.